Dr. Berkson, thank you so much for joining me today. I am really happy to be here with you, Peter. I've been looking forward to this. So I want to talk about hormones because I know you have a tremendous background here um, and you've been practicing for years, decades, um, helping women, helping men with hormonal issues. The first question I'd like to tackle is the one that I get asked the most, which is I have a history of breast cancer in my family or I have a personal history of breast cancer. My doctors have said estrogen is dangerous, progesterone or testosterone is dangerous because of that history. Could you address some of those fears, where they came from originally, and kind of what we now know and why that's not true? Excellent. So I want to share with you how we can download this or Vulcan mind meld it in like a minute or two. <laughs> Remember that? I'll just press my hand against your head and hope the audience will get it. I'm pressing my hands, pressing my hands against your heads. So Medscape is a very conservative online medical journal and it goes out to about eight to nine million providers around the world. To tell you where hormones are at, about a month ago, not even that, there was an article that came out in Medscape saying, now that hormones are vindicated, nobody knows how to prescribe them. Let's get hormones straight. And that is exactly what's going on. And they even had about a week before that, which we're talking September 2024, they had an article saying, why should women in their 80s and plus, meaning older than 80s, miss out on hormones? It's cruel. It's a disservice to them, but nobody knows how to prescribe them. That's the most conservative medical journal confirming what we now know to be true, that hormones really help you stay younger longer, often avoiding high blood pressure meds, meds for um, prediabetes or diabetes, multiple issues, even cognition. In fact, many of us in the hormone space feel that if you're on hormones, 80 to 90% of people would not end up with Alzheimer's disease. So why has there been this fear? And why did Medscape have this title? Hormones are back, but nobody knows how to prescribe them. Hormones were the most prescribed medication in the United States all the way up till the year 2001. And that's because they began in England in the 1950s with the promise by a gynecologist by Dr. Wilson that if you were on hormones, you could stay feminine forever because you're kind of extending your premenopausal life by taking hormones that you don't make, but that are exactly like what your body used to make. And you can put them into your system and you can slow down the MAC truck of time. Well, we're an aging nation. And understandably enough, the government wanted to figure out how not to topple Medicare. So in the mid 1900s, and they launched it in the beginning of 2000s, they began a series of studies by 40 of our most prestigious institutions, although I won't say they really earned that title anymore but Harvard was at the top and our National Institute of Health, and they looked at women and said, how can we caretake women so we won't run out of money in the government when people are older? And one of the first things they wanted to look at was hormones. So they ran two randomized trials. That, they ran many trials, but they ran two randomized trials on hormones, and it looked like in the beginning of those trials that, oh my God, hormones actually caused the very things that we'd been proclaiming that they helped, heart disease, blood clots, breast cancer, etc. So we are a very reactive country. And the minute one thing happens, we switch to that. Another thing happens, we switch to that. When really in practice, seasoned doctors like yourself and myself and our colleagues Look at what's been working clinically in practice. We call that clinical acumen. So since hormones were started in the 1950s in England and then America was supplying them or prescribing them to almost 20 million women by the year 2000, clinically, hormones were working. 
You could go on hormones even after you had a stint, after you had a heart attack, after you had a stroke of all things. You could go on hormones when you were in perimenopause, menopause, and clinically we saw that patients not only looked better, but they fared better. With these two randomized trials, it looked like, oh my God, that's not true. And within a short period of time, biggies in the gynecologic terrain, like Leon Spiroff, he's considered the father of obstetrics and gynecology. And he was a professor at the University of Portland when I actually was going to Western States in Portland. Within a few months, he was looking at the data and he said, don't look at this data. It doesn't match with what we've seen in practice. And things are wrong with the methodology of these studies. So very soon, reanalyses of these studies started coming out, showing that they were done wrong. They had terrible mistakes. But because we are a reactive nation in the United States, within the very first few months that it looked like hormones were bad, but that was an erroneous conclusion, lawyers got in on it because we're litigious. And associations warned their physicians, don't write scripts for hormones. You might lose your license. You might get um, sued. So gynecologists in the United States got very frightened of writing scripts for hormones. The rest of the world didn't act so reactively as we did. And we are so incredibly reactive that we stopped teaching hormones in medical schools, in osteopathic schools, and even, sad, in naturopathic schools. So suddenly we have two decades of no providers, medical doctors, nurse practitioners, naturopaths, physician's assistants, no providers being trained in hormones at all. There's no curriculum. In fact, there was a survey in 2023 of gynecologists. You would think a gynecologist knows hormones. You would think. You would think a urologist, that's a male doctor, knows hormones. But they did this major study. In fact, this was just presented to Congress because they're trying to take our tax dollars to try and find people to teach hormones now to med school students because there are no doctors that even know how to teach it. So um, what happened was there was this survey in 2023. They questioned gynecologists, how many of you have actually had a course on hormones? And 31% said they'd had one course of about six months and it wasn't extensive in hormones, which means 70%, the majority of gynecologists, have no training in hormones. So they stopped training doctors. In fact, David Brownstein, a mutual colleague of ours, his two daughters just graduated osteopathic school and residency in the last two years. And I asked them, I said, you know, How was your training in hormones? What did they say? They said, we got no training in hormones. They cause cancer. Don't write scripts through them. End of story. And this is in the last few years. And and to be clear, because hormones is a big word. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I just want the audience to be clear. Right. We're talking about estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. Are those the three main ones that we're talking about? What I mean, what are we talking about? Because plenty of people are on thyroid hormone. Right, and plenty of people are on prednisone as a hormone, but, but are, what, which ones are we specifically? Dis- Great question. I probably should have started there with Hormones 101. I apologize. First, let me get hormones straight. Hormones are the most powerful signaling molecules in your body because they're the only molecules in your body that can directly speak to genes. And they tell your genes, which have all your archival information of your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents. It's your human genetic um, library. And hormones speak to that library, pull out the right information, and tell your cells what to do. And the reason vitamin D is so famous today is that it's a vitamin, which means we have to make it, and we have to take it regularly because our bodies don't make it. But it's also 
a hormone. So hormones are the most powerful signaling molecule that are not just sexy things or reproductive things. They literally speak to genes, not designer Levi genes, but genes to tell your body what to do or your local tissues what to do. And they speak to genes in your brain, in your eyes, in your vocal cords, in your lungs, in your liver, throughout your entire digestive tract, on your bones, on your muscles, on the cells that line your blood vessels. Hormones deliver signals to all of these. So you would think if you're a, a gastroenterologist, a gut doctor, you'd learn gut stuff, but then you'd learn hormones because hormones totally line the gut to help keep the gut healthy. But no, gastroenterologists don't learn hormones. Your brain, the piggy bank of your memories, your hippocampus, the neuroplasticity that helps you make decisions or have gut feelings, all run by hormones. So you might think that, well, maybe neurologists and gerontologists would know about hormones, but everything's compartmentalized with, there's such a vast body of information in medicine that things are compartmentalized. So we've got eye doctors, gut doctors, cognition doctors, joint doctors, uh, kidney doctors, liver doctors, and they all do their thing, but all those tissues are really run by hormones, but they don't learn that part of it. It's really crazy. So nobody has been given, there's no board certification in menopause medicine. There is no board certification in andropause medicine and the awful thing is that because our planet is dirty and encompassed with pollution and chemicals that actually can harm our own hormones, we are now having 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids that don't have enough hormones. And we are now seeing erectile dysfunctionality and anxiety and sleep disorder and bone um, in issues like osteopenia and not quite osteoporosis, but in teenagers, because hormones run everything in all phases of life, but nobody's trained to assess any of this. And thus, I really appreciate the opportunity to come here and talk about it. So hormones are important. They run the show. They run the north to the south. They run sexuality and reproduction, but much, much, much more than that. But because of the Women's Health Initiative in 2002, everyone got nervous about hormones inappropriately and wrongly. So doctors stopped being trained in hormones. So if a doctor doesn't know hormones and you come in as a patient and ask, hey doc, am I a candidate for hormones, you're usually going to get a wrong answer, a negative answer, because it's human to be down on what you're not up on. So they're not trained, and all they've heard is it's bad, 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 and scary, wrongly. And so people have been asking their doctors if they can take hormones, and their doctors basically say they drive cancer, they're not worth it, you're a high-risk person, maybe you're not even a high-risk person, you still sh shouldn't take them. Well, in 2019, there were many reanalyses of this wrong first woman's health initiative that came out in July 2002. But in 2019, after 14 analyses that all showed that hormones were protective, on breast tissue against breast cancer. Estrogen protected against breast cancer. The original researchers, the original researchers, which include Harvard on down, they reanalyzed the Women's Health Initiative and said, we made a terrible mistake. Hormones, if you're on estrogen and you're healthy, for an average of five years, you have a 23% less risk of getting breast cancer in the first place. And if you're on hormones and you get breast cancer, instead of suing your doctor, you should shake their hand. Because if you're on hormones, this is exactly the same for men. If men are on testosterone and they get prostate cancer, if women 
are on estrogen and they get breast cancer, they have a better acting tumor and they have a decreased risk of dying from the disease. That means that the 2019 reanalysis of the Women's Health Initiative by the very authors who first put it out and first said, stop it, we think it's dangerous, said, we have egg on our face, we were totally wrong. And if you're on estrogen for an average of five years, you have a 44% decreased risk if you get breast cancer of dying from it. Almost a 50% reduction in fatality. Nothing has ever been proven that successful. But that message that estrogen was safe breast protective, and if you're on estrogen and you get breast cancer, you die less from it, more than anything else has ever shown. That didn't make headline news like the headline news in 2002 because we're a reactive country. We're a litigious country. We want to get somebody and, you know, like now where the whole country is taken over by semi-glutides and, and we get onto something and we just go, you know, excuse my expression, can I say this, balls to the walls about something. Yeah. And, and we make it, you know, we're kind of crazy. And that's what Leon Spiroff, he wrote many articles saying, don't throw the hormonal baby out with the bathwater. Women on hormones, think better longer, project vocally better longer, have less kidney disease, have less lung disease. So what exactly are the hormones? And I hope I'm not talking too much, but it's testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, which is dehydroepiandrosterone, and pregnenolone, and also oxytocin. And all of these hormones are in both men and women, so everything I'm saying applies to our wonderful gents and our wonderful gals who shouldn't be missing out on this. You know, I had breast cancer almost 33 years ago, and I've been on hormone replacement for almost 30 years. And in a month and a half, I'm going to be 76. And I'm still running around the country with a fire in my belly because I don't want other people to miss out because I didn't. And everyone's always saying, how do you have the energy and the brain, the lubed brain and so forth that you have? Because most people my age don't get to enjoy that.